depending on where you are. Um, Victor Tharp here, uh, back with a live dryland session. It has been a long time. It's been more than a year, I think, since Sophia and I did the last one. Um, but I thought it was time for it. I have a foot infection, so I can't skate at the moment, but that's why I'm here. Uh, and I can still do this kind of stuff, and I thought it'd be really cool to, yeah, to do it with you guys. Let me know in the comments if sound is not working, if, if things has to be changed. As you can see here, it's, uh, this is plenty of space to follow this workout. We are, uh, we're gonna wait a little bit because more and more people are, are obviously tuning in. Let me just see if I can put this in a tripod. Or stand here. There we go. All right, yeah, so uh, we're gonna do this, this workout. All you need is really two times two meters and uh, then you should be good. It's gonna be six exercises. Uh, we'll, we'll wait until everybody's here before we get, get into the specifics. But um, <clears throat> sound is good, nice. To be honest, I did, I did bring out a decent mic for this one. So, uh, so I'm glad it's actually working. I'll put this next to me, hopefully that'll be sufficient for you guys to, to hear me as we do the exercises. I'll try and do a nice voiceover so that you guys know what, what to focus on when doing these, uh, what to have in mind. I think the technical aspect of dryline, especially dryline where we can slow down the movements is, is pretty awesome. It's the thing we can't really do on skates to the same point because there's so many other things that are gonna just influence us. Um, obviously, it's gonna be shaky, we're on top of wheels. There's a lot of other things to focus on. Uh, we're going at higher speed, definitely higher speed than no speed. So in today's session and for dryland in general, of course, some of it is gonna be digging really deep. I'll try and share some of that. Uh, if this is something that you guys enjoy, uh, share some of the stuff that I do over the spring, the summer, this upcoming season, because um, I obviously do it and Hola, Espanol, uh, España. And um, yeah, that's just uh, super easy for me to share with you guys. So if, if there's uh, if that's something you'd be interested in, I'll try and do it as well. Uh, but yeah, generally it's just the, the biggest plus, uh, in my opinion, in dryland is that we can slow things down and, and work on them at whatever pace we need to. We can also dig deeper before things fall apart. We don't need the shin strength or things like that, but the balance, uh, surface, turning, passing, we can exclude all that from the equation and really just focus on doing the movements well. Um, all right, I think it's about time. We got a decent amount of people checked in here. Um, obviously, if you most of the people watching these live streams are not watching them live. Um, wow, there's a drone over there. Most of the people watching these live streams are not watching them live, so um, if you're checking in later on, stoked, you want to watch this, share it with your teammates, your club, whoever you feel like uh, doing dryland with. Today's session um, is going to be, it's going to take about half an hour, 45 minutes with the rest included. Um, and we're going to do six exercises. It's going to be the same six exercises in each of the three sets. Uh, we're going to start out with some pretty solid, stable, basic ones that everybody would be able to do almost perfectly if if you check up on yourself technically and you listen carefully to what I have to say, then they should be pretty straightforward. After that, we, uh, we're we gonna slowly go into something that demands a little more coordination or a little more balance, but again, we're gonna take it easy and I suggest that, I think it's in the description, description below, but otherwise, uh, two different protocols. So if you're an experienced dry lander or skater, go for one minute downtime, 30 seconds rest. So one minute work, 30 seconds rest. Or if you're rather new to this, do 30 seconds of exercise and 60 seconds of rest. I know it's a completely different ratio, but again, the reason I'm here is to teach you how to do these technically. Otherwise I could just written the program for you guys. Um, so make sure to put the technique first and, uh, and then you can always grind it on your own uh, in the weeks, months, years to come. But the technical foundation is key, especially with these workouts where we're doing our best to gradually build. So um, obviously that's gonna be 130 per set of exercise, a minute 30, and then we're gonna just continue for nine minutes straight, take a little rest, and then we're gonna go for nine more minutes, take a little rest, and then nine more minutes, and then we're done. Um, if you had the opportunity to do some warm up, that'd be great. If not, they're not super intense exercises. I'm pretty 
confident you're not going to get injured by doing these. And again, I'm doing it here on a balcony where there's literally no space. So I'm just going to warm up with you. Again, we're going to start with this super basic exercise. The first one, you can spoil already, it's going to be up downs. So not overly hard. All right. I uh, think we're about to get ready. I will start a stopwatch. A final little prayer. If you are enjoying this, uh, if you want me to make more of these videos, I'll bring Sophia on board as well. Then leave a super chat. It's a function where you can click in the comment section, you can click on the dollar sign, leave a super chat. Every Any amount of money, I think, is what was optional there. Um, that's just going to help me out, help the channel out, buy a cool mic, better camera. Um, and then obviously, I'll try and make more content in my spare time when I'm not out skating and racing myself. So that's a cool way to support the channel. If, um, if you have the means to do that, I'll appreciate it. If not, let's get down to business. I'll just try and adapt a little tripod here so you guys can see what actually is going on. This is a decent view. Zooming out somewhat here, looks all right. The cool thing about the fact that we have three sets is that I'll try and do them from the front, try and do them from the side, and then the last set, we can honestly just go through Q&A, basically, as we do it. Um, yeah, so any questions, feel free to ask. Whether it's related to this video or not, um, I'd love to hear from you guys. Uh, it's not often that I do these interaction kind of videos, so I think that's super fun. And um, yeah, that's about it. Let's get to it. So, put the mic there. Okay, the first exercise is gonna be up downs. So it's really just basic position. Find the position here, and then we go up down. It can be at a slow, controlled pace. And as we do the exercise, I will go through all the things you need to think about as you do these. I'll start the clock here. Remember two options. Either it's one minute of exercise, 30 seconds off, or the other way around, 30 seconds of exercise and one minute off. Again, we're here to work in skating, not get strong. That you can do in the next session at home. All right, I'll start the countdown and we can do it together if you wanna start a clock watch of your own. If not, I will make sure to keep you updated. We will start in five seconds. Four, three, two, one. Okay, so just slowly up and down here. Great warm up. So even though this is super simple, like I said, everybody can, can do this exercise. There is still plenty of things to focus on here. Um, one of them is being solid all the way through. It's easy to wobble up and down with the shoulders, easy to go too far forward. It's also very easy, 30 seconds up, to collapse the knees in or out. We do that when skating. It's just gonna be a super easy way to lose power. Also try not to be overly tense. So if you can relax everything basically that's not in use. So shoulders should just be in a relaxed natural position. Same with the head. That's one of my big hurdles when skating. Get really tense. Got five more seconds for the one minute team. And rest. All right, 30 seconds rest. I'll try and look through comments. Push this with his right like a scooter. Um, I mean, obviously, left leg. So we had somebody comment that left leg. Just the next exercise we'll do here is basically the same, but now we switch to one leg. So we're going to do five reps on each, starting three seconds. <clears throat> there we go. So the same thing, basically. It challenges a little more because it's harder maintaining balance on one leg. But again, if you need to go slower, go slower. A nice way of not cheating in this exercise is to switch the leg at the bottom. So this one is really challenging the knee here. Much easier to get wobbly. And that's it for the 30 second protocol. <clears throat> Especially from the front view, I try and point everything straight forward. So if I was skating, I'd be able to push straight to the side. Use Same with the recovery leg. It's not tilting anywhere. It's all just in the hips, ready to push straight to the side and accelerate straight forward. And we got pops. But we got 24 people checking. 
<clears throat> yeah, so somebody comments here. That's what I'm here for. The next one is called weight transfer. So we simply go down in a nice skating position. We find that, you know, where we started, we extend the leg, and then we just transfer from side to side. We start in five seconds. All right. Let's go. Make sure to really drive with the hips. It's not like this. Point everything straight forward. And then we move. All right, so to answer that question, it is super normal to get more tired in the left. Uh, I don't think we should focus too much on avoiding that. It's a good thing it means we're working the legs. But if we can take over some of that, or use more power with the right, that's what we should be aiming for instead. And especially in the turns. All right, it's 30 seconds. Especially in the turns, what you want to do is to engage the right. So make sure, step one, you land that right leg in the crossover. Land it in a position where you're ready right away. So it's not just waiting there. Don't step too far forward, reach too far in. 10 more seconds. <clears throat> and then make sure your hip does not tilt out of the turn. If that goes out, I'll demonstrate that in three seconds. And rest. So if when you do your crossover, obviously the left is going to be in here. If you do this with the right, you can't really use it. It's hard to push that way when it's in here. So you have to put yourself back in that position and it's too late. And that can be one of the reasons you overuse your left leg. Oh, thanks for the... Have you liked the video? Okay. Next one is small baby steps. You're going to move a little forward, start in one second. But if you do it on place, you can really also just almost keep it in the same position. The idea here is to just get used to that movement backwards as we do when we're skating, but to keep everything else in the same position. So we basically be able to do this without any of this tilting. So super tiny steps forward. This is really about stability, maintaining that same position even though we got movement. 30 seconds up. Free to use the arms. Again, common mistake is to just, for this knee to tilt in. So use the, the side of your glutes here. Keep them steady. Almost pull the leg a little like that because then there's a good chance it's gonna just look straight. And then sit low, of course. That's a minute. I'm too old to be <laughs> yeah. It takes a lot of stretching flexibility as well. Good morning, India. Happy to have you guys. I might actually go with Sophia to India this off season for, uh, for a training camp to New Delhi, I think, for a five, five day camp with Sophia. My wife, also skater. All right, five seconds to the next one. The most classic, the kill zone. So really just feel pressure and move. Not a full imitation extension, but just a gentle feel the pressure in the hips to weight transfer. Let's go. This is a great exercise because it is by far the most crucial part in long track, inline, short track, is how you apply that pressure when you have your legs underneath yourself, basically. So within the shoulders, it's where you can generate the most speed. It's not at the end of the push. It's when it's here. 30 seconds up. Make sure it's not tilting. So it's really just controlled. As soon as you lift up that leg, there's no nothing pulling around it. It's just loose, hanging, following the body, which makes sense. The natural thing would be come over here. Lead with the hip so you're not following but that goes first all right 30 seconds rest we'll get down to the final exercise excellent form thank you right. try to stay fit <laughs> i do these a lot so uh, that for sure helps the final one another classic circles the last one of the set the most challenging by far i'm going to show this from the side you push out and then you do a circle get it back here push out we're gonna do three in each leg and then switch. We're starting in two seconds. So get down, find that position, circle out. Beautiful circle. 
the more stable, controlled, immobile this is, the better. Again, if you're skating, you want to push without any loss. So keep these points in place and just push straight. Smooth, slow down the pace. When you're skating, you also don't want to push out and then pause it. It has to be a continuous movement. Otherwise, it's got to be really hard. And you're also not using the full push to generate speed. The slower, the better. All right, we've got 15 seconds to go and we've got a minute. Again, it's all about this knee. It's usually where the flaw comes. But when you push out here, the center of gravity switches, knee goes in, upper body out, and rest. First set down. Um, yeah, let's take like a minute and a half, two minutes rest, and then we get back to it. I would usually take maybe three, even four minutes of easy jog rest, get some water, but uh, it's also super cold here. It's about minus 10, 12 Celsius. Might be different in India, but uh, yeah, <laughs> let's not take too much rest and then uh, get down to set number two. Say we start in two minutes from now, then uh, if you need water, toilet break, Q&A, let's go. How can you structure training on your own with weights, off skate and going out? Um, I don't go out, <laughs> so that's all some of it. Weights and off skate, I have a really great coach here, Mitch Whitmore, uh, with my team, Fast Team. He uh, he organizes, manages, um, yeah, my whole training plan basically. In the off season or preseason, we I I kind of do it myself within some set um, like structure. So let's say in the preseason, I have a certain amount of hours that I must do every week on the bike, on the inlines, two weightlifting sessions, two dryline sessions, and then I can really just make my own structure, make it flexible around my own life, uh, where I'm going on training camps or races, etc. on inlines. But uh, as we get into the season, it's very, very structured down to each interval and and such. So that's a little different. But yeah, I I have made actually a training plan where you can see what I suggest. Um, you can check the description. Um, I have made four different plans, actually. Some for marathon skating, some for sprint skating, some for I think weightlifting, how to implement that, where it's really just I give two to three weekly workouts that I would use in addition to whatever you do. So um, check those out when we're done here. But um, yeah, that's basically what I do myself as well. Obviously, you change a little year by year to try and improve a little. Um, but that's the main structure, and it's, it's not going to change that much because we know most of it works. All right, we're starting again 15 seconds. Leave a super chat if you haven't already. Then. I do promise I will make more live sessions um, if if that's what you guys are interested in. All right, we start again with the first, just the classic up down in five seconds. I'll show it from the side this time so you get an idea of the, how that looks. Let's go. So when you look at side you, key thing, 90 degree knee bend here, should be able to touch your toes and heels or <laughs> touch your toes and heels without bending too far down, and then just find a good pace here. Notice how my upper body is in the exact same position constantly throughout this exercise. There's no going up. I also have the center of gravity underneath, so not tilting my butt backwards, it just all goes together. All right, halfway. Don't look too far off, even though you want to see where you're going, especially if you're pack racing, then that's just gonna make it really hard to have the hips under, engage the glutes. So look a little through your eyebrows in a relaxed position. Well, this is technically easy. It might be the physically hardest one of the exercises. All right, two seconds and pause. Okay. Do we have any more questions coming in? Same structure, training on your own. Um, I, I do a lot of training in groups also, to be fair. I don't mind training on my own. I like it, especially for longer aerobic things. For cycling, I just really care a lot about being in the right training zones. And I think I have the mentality to go for eight hour bike rides on my own without complaining too much. All right, next one here, single leg up downs, one second. So this one, 
goes well behind. It doesn't stay here. Because if you were skating, you would do a circle. So make sure this goes almost down to your heel. Remember, five on each. And we switch. One, two, three, four, five. And we switch at the bottom. Halfway. You can use the arms if you want. That goes for basically all the exercises, especially if you're a sprinter or just looking to improve that part of your skating. What do we have? 10 more seconds. Three seconds to go. And pause. Trying to adjust the mic here a little. We're basically halfway now. All right, next one start in 15 seconds. <clears throat> That's the weight transfer. So, really good way to start all these exercises, and even when we're halfway to get back to that, is to focus on the fact that we're in this position. That is the most essential part. All right, let's go one second. Let's extend that leg. And then just move from side to side. A really cool way to like auto check yourself in this exercise is that when you're all the way over to one side, if you can lift that leg without moving anything around, well then you know you transfer your weight, which is the name of the goal of this exercise. comes down to the same basic at this point we are in the position we we're in just before so we just go back and forth all right that was 40 seconds and again feel free to use the arms I'll keep mine <laughs> in my pants because it's freezing two one all right Two more exercises and we're done with the second set. Super cool to see that many people joining the live stream. I, I tried to make it early US time. It's eight in the morning here, just for, for Europe, maybe even Asia to, uh, to take part. South America as well. Um, yeah, so I hope that fits you guys. If not, let me know in the comments also. Whenever we're done with this video, I'll, I'll stay on for like five, 10 minutes and we can, we can chat a little about what's, what works better. All right, we're starting, let's go. So I'll try and show this one from the side as well, the super tiny steps. So you may have gotten this point, but we're really just combining all these exercises. So as you can see here, this is the one leg squat, except this one, we focus on this being stable when it goes backwards. That's why the next exercise is the circles, where we get that full motion. The side one, which is the weight transfer, and then the part we get it back here, but we'll keep all this in position. Because if we push with a leg, but everything else, 30 seconds up, get soft, well, <laughs> we lost it all. It's like doing a squat without having your back engaged, and that's never gonna be good. The better you get at these, of course, sit lower, but also make a smoother weight transfer. If you're new to it, you can take your time here. If you're good, just like on skates, never want to have two legs on the ground at the same time. And pause. The final exercise is the, oh, we got two more. We didn't get the circles in. How do you decide what weather is okay to inline skate outside? Oh, I'm, uh, and where I'm located. All right. So where I'm located currently in the United States, Utah, Salt Lake City. This so next one is the kill zone. Like this, show from the side, we're starting at five. Let's go. As you can see at this position, we're back to the one leg squat. And then we just move to the side. Key is, of course, hitting this position without pausing, but just to make sure it gets there. Um, yeah, I'm located in Salt Lake City. It's high altitude, the fastest ring in the world. So I spent most of the winters here training with my team, my coach, my wife. And then halfway, and then 
I get back to Denmark. I am Danish, by the way, if you're not that familiar with me in the channel. And, uh, and then do all the off-season fitness work in Denmark before the ice season kicks off. Obviously, it's in Europe, so I try and do as many inline skating races as possible during that time as well. Five more seconds. And pause. The last one is the circles. The one where we combine all these skills. I'd say the one that's, except for this one, maybe the closest. Hey, Rebecca from Chicago. What a Danish last name, Rasmussen. Um, how do you decide what weather is okay to inline skate outside? I, uh, <laughs> that's a good question. The, I have the advantage that I do ice skating in the winter. Ice skating is my main sport, my profession. So that's the only one where I feel like I must do this the way I must do it. All right, circles. Um, remember three each side. Again, we're down in this position. Key here is to when this goes backwards, we don't tilt or we don't twist. Um, so I feel comfortable skating. I, I try and, I mean, it was different when I skated, inline skating to compete. I would try and skate a lot in the rain because you never know, it could rain during races and then that's a great skill to be able to perform well in the rain. At this point, I can get a better workout in, also a more comfortable workout to be honest, halfway, when we're doing ice skating in the winter, also it's my sport, or dry land, slide board, turn cable, but I would inline skate down to just a little above freezing point and right now I keep it to, to the dry days, <laughs> trying to wipe the rain, just because it takes it's a little extra strain to get wet and pause set to to get wet to get cold so if i can avoid that i do all right that was it we start the last set in two and a half minutes so uh get your water bottle shake your legs and then uh down to the final one make it the best one yeah so i would i would skate outside um you can skate in the rain as long as you got good wheels i use the rollerblade hydrogen pro if they're new better get the firm ones they'll have better grip and um yeah it's, it's a big plus if there's like a clubhouse or somewhere you can keep warm in between if not uh yeah i made a video on the channel actually on how i inline in the winter um just about wearing a lot of cold or warm clothes and uh use booth covers gloves whatever dry line is not too bad because it's it feels a lot warmer when we do it um, you don't move, it's like being on a home trainer on a cold balcony of it in the winter, not too bad. Um, professional skater, for road skating, which one is better? Professional skater, recreational skate? Um, that's a good question. I, uh, I think obviously for road skating, professional skates, like low cut speed skates are better if you have the angle strength. A skate I've been trying out a lot, we've done some photo shootings with Rollerblade, is the BOA Ref, so it's kind of a semi-speed, but I like it a lot more than the classic semi-speed skates because it is technically a speed boot with a cuff. It's not a in-between kind of thing. So it's really a nice mix of them. I think for a lot of people, that one could be faster. Did some comparison videos that you can check out on the channel where I took them for, uh, yeah, for a test skate and we're talking less than two kilometers per hour difference at marathon cruise speed, about 38 kilometers per hour. So it's not far off. For road skating, which one is better? Oh. We got that one. Uh, favorite dinner before a race? Like that question. All right, we're getting ready. In 30 seconds, we go for the final set. Um, that's a good question. The perfect dinner. Something rich in carbohydrates. I bake my own bread, so I like to eat that. Could do lots of bread the, the night before. Uh, classic would be pasta. Not a big fan of that. I think it's more of a flavor thing. Uh, I'm a dietitian, so I do care an awful lot about this. Um, yeah, just a bunch of bread, maybe a sushi ball, get some salmon in there as well. Um, but yeah, just loads of carbohydrates. Okay, we're going in two, one, let's go. So some of them, for this final set, I'm trying to give you some different advice, some key things for you to do these when I'm not here, <laughs> or even to teach other people how to do them. One of these is if you keep a fist or even two side fists like this between your knees, it's a good way to make sure that your knees are not going in. Because this is really tricky. You can look down and see like that straight. And then there's one weak point here in the middle where they go a little like that. And it's very common. 
It's also very common to let the body upper body tilt. So for that one, in position, you should be able to have your elbows here. And if you make sure that when you're down, they will still be there, well, there's a good chance you're not diving with the upper body. All right, 15 to go. Ten, five, and there we go. Thirty seconds rest. Is there any questions now regarding the exercises? Inline skates I recommend for beginners. I mean, if you're a brand brand new to skating, uh, rollerblade, macroblade, honestly, super fun skate. I have a pair myself. My wife has one, and uh, we just do like city cruises, basically a smoother way of commuting than bringing a bike along in big cities. European cities like Copenhagen is pretty awesome. Uh, so like that. Okay, we go to the one leg squats. Let's go. And I'm doing five per leg. Remember, no cheating. Switch at the bottom in that 90 degree knee bend position. These fit super well. You basically, get five in for 30 seconds. An easy way to downscale, upscale the intensity of this. Hardest part is counting, if you ask me, while talking. Now, what we're doing today is some of the most like, statically mobile exercises. Obviously, you can add so much more movement to your dry land, make it more of a cardio workout than a muscle endurance kind of workout, um, which I do when I get closer to my peak. This is really like technical off-season kind of stuff, the rest, but um, I'm pretty, pretty sure both of them are gonna make you better at skating. This is just more about the basics. So the thing is a long-term investment. These are close to ideal exercises. If you nail these, you're gonna be really good at skating <laughs> almost no matter what. Okay, next one. Weight transfer, do it from the front this time. Find a position, straight leg, and then we transfer. This exercise is simple, but so many things can go wrong. <laughs> so, if you have a mirror, check. I mean, this is a great spot for me to look in the, the camera. I can see my shoulders. You should constantly be parallel to the bars here, parallel to the floor. It's very easy to let them dive. They shouldn't. It should really just be the hip. Doom. Straight line, straight line, and we're halfway. So get the hip all the way over there. This is what I said. If you're good at it, you're gonna be. If you do correctly, if you're gonna, you'd be able to lift this up without doing anything, um, or anything out of position. You should have the entire body weight here. Well, like when you skate, you don't want to be in the middle of it. You want to get all the way over on one leg. Five more seconds, and pause. Okay, next one, the small baby steps there. You have the space, move a little forward, so you feel those hips driving forward, You're not getting tilted behind. Starting 15 seconds. <clears throat> 10, again, start the exercise, same way. Find that position. First exercise we did, then the second one, and then you use the weight transfer. Let's go to move it forward. The tricky part here is not really moving it forward, is to move this a little backwards without this happening. If we do this, we're gonna kick backwards, we're gonna lose our momentum when skating. Always keep this tucked in under. So we do these exercises to so this position, we'll just stay there forever basically. <laughs> Way. And then as you get better and better at these, better at skating, hopefully you're able to like relax a little more in it so you're not feeling like too mechanical. Like this is should be weightlifting. Should just be a thing where you train these muscles to be in position. They're gonna get so strong that that position is just a natural thing. So we got 10 more seconds. Yeah. 
and pass. <coughs> Two more exercises. Oh, we're basically done. Should we do them daily? No, I would not do them daily. Um, <coughs> I would do two dry line workouts per week, uh, depending on how into skating you are. If you do train twice a week, I would make those two workouts skating. Skating is the fun of it. Skating is what you want to get good at. Um, all right, get them ready for kill zone. <coughs> so no, if you, it depends how, how much you train actually. Like if you train twice a week, I wouldn't even do a session of dry line. I would maybe do this as off season when it's too icy outside or rainy or do it as a warm up thing. Um, if you skate basically every day, like I do, I would do twice a week. And then maybe in competition season, I would do one time full workout and one time as a halfway, as a warm up technique dial in kind of session. Um, oh, if you scroll down into the description of this video, <laughs> you will find that I made a full 100 days dry line plan where I also do recommend two, sometimes three workouts per week. Um, that thing will have a ton of video material, basically videos like this for hours where I explain. Stop. All right, we got the circles left. That's it. <coughs> so in that program, I explain all you need to know when to do the workouts, how long, how much set, rest, um, everything. And um, so that's a good guideline. You can take a free preview in the description and then, uh, yeah, that should hopefully answer all the dry line questions. <coughs> all right, let's get ready for the circles. Final exercise of the day, the morning, the evening, depending on where you're at. We start in one second, let's go. Three per leg. So as you can see here, what I just explained with the weight transfer is that when we're here, the weight transfer, we should also be able to lift it up. Also notice that this, of course, doing this movement stays the same, but also whether I'm on my right leg or my left leg, it stays the same here. Halfway. If you really struggle with this exercise, <clears throat> oh, a little glister. Well, a great way of training, being in, and pause, or end. Good job, everybody. That was the end of the live stream. Um, let's just lower, or pull you guys a little higher here. Yeah, so a great way of, of making sure you get that is by doing things where you just stand up like I do now and then try and lift your leg up to the side without tilting anything. Um, that's really what you want to train for that specific thing. So, uh, yeah, I'm trying to demonstrate that from... So really, a way to practice the thing if you struggle to keep or even in skating position a little backwards. We'll train uh, what we call the gluteus medius. So basically the muscle that maintains the knees out. <laughs> You can train that, and uh, I definitely recommend that. I do it every single day as part of my warm-up routine before I get on my skates, because that's the thing I struggle with. So, big uh, recommendation for me here. How can I push faster? Um, okay, so we have a few questions here. So first question here, how can I push faster? Key to pushing faster is landing. Obviously, a lot of genetics and a lot of physical strength. I don't have fast twitch, so I don't push fast, but I try and apply more power. Key to pushing faster is landing in a position where you can push off right away. So if you land with your legs too far forward, or you obviously have to wait for your body to transfer onto that leg before you can push. So land it in a position, a little like if you want to jump, where do you want to land your legs? Right underneath yourself. So whenever you step, onto a skate, get your whole body with you onto the skate. So the skate is not away from your body because then you can't push on it. So land it underneath yourself and keep your body going with the skates. That's a good way to do faster steps. Obviously solid core, uh, you're engaged there. It's not gonna be wobbly, it's not gonna be any power transfer delay. So try and do that. 
have wear pants. I use wear pants for all my uh, dry land workouts. I love those. It's a, uh, there's a link in the description. It's a cool me mechanism that is basically resistant bands attached to your waist, either upper body, lower body. So you just get crazy more out of each exercise. I don't use them here for live sessions because I think it's just really hard. So I wouldn't be able to talk so much. And uh, this today's session wasn't hard. It was more, for me, it wasn't hard. Um, it was more just to educate you guys and, and share what I do with you all. Um, but work bands, I would use those in my dry land programs. I, I use them for every single exercise. They are pretty cool. Made some my own little studies um, measuring muscle oxygen and strain. And they makes it basically twice as hard for your muscles. So if, especially if you're not a professional, if you have a job, kids, whatever, then uh, you get a lot more out of your time using the work bands, the elastic bands. Mm, resting times. Uh, Depends, depends on your level. If you want it to be a technical workout, you can take as much rest as you need, basically. If you want it to be a cardio workout, I don't think dry line, especially not this kind, is the most efficient workout. I would do more of a jump kind of thing. Uh, in my dry line plan, there's a specific workout called rhythm jumps that is just cardio, uh, a cardio workout. So that is kind of different and more or CrossFit-ish style without the weights. Um, so high intensity session for these ones, do the rest you need to do them technically well, um, rather do more rest and do longer period of work if that's the muscle strength stamina you're aiming for because you can reach a higher level of exhaustion and um, it generally uh, benefits you. Found your channel today. Rollblade seems super awesome. I wonder if I said something fucked up. Hey, that's cool. Welcome to the channel. Uh, have you here? Does the three wheel setup offer a longer distance? I currently have normal skates and I was considering a change. Um, if you're good at skating, three wheels is the best. But to be fully honest, I have skated since age what, two and I still struggle with the three wheel setup a little. I do skate faster on them, but I also, to be fully honest, admit that I am technically a little worse. Not to the point where I go slower, but just that my ankles are a little more wobbly. Um, I kick backwards, I lift them a little higher off the ground, just because you are higher off the ground. Um, obviously, 125 millimeter wheels, three wheel frame, that's the main point of using a three wheels, you can get bigger wheels, more roll. It's almost like having a higher gear, a bigger gear on a bicycle, which is pretty nice if you have the power to actually push it and the technical um, yeah, skills to do it. So yeah, if you're looking for better cruise speed and maritime PB and you're already an experienced skater, three wheel drive, three wheel frames, 125 millimeters will make you a little faster. But I would not go on those wheels too early in my skating career or journey. Um, yeah, because it will not make you, you, you can progress faster, better on smaller wheels simply because you have more maneuverability. Um, and also it's going to be more comfortable, so you might dare. Like the things we talked a lot about today in the session was to really get onto each skate, have more weight transfer. That is a lot easier if you're closer to the ground, if you have more contact points with the ground, hence four wheels. So I would not leave the four-wheel setup too early in my, uh, my skating journey. All right, let's uh, give it a few more minutes. If you want to leave a super chat, you click in the comment section, and uh, then you can click on the dollar sign. Leave any amount down to half a dollar if <laughs> that's what you think this session was worth. And uh, yeah, then I do these for free, and I will keep on doing them and um, do my best. Obviously, we're going to have some longer sessions, some harder sessions later on, but um, yeah, this is the start of it, and technical foundation is, is key, I believe, in skating. And um, feel free to ask comments. 90 on three wheels. Um, if you're an adult, I would go with four wheels, especially 90 millimeters. I would, as an adult, the general setup I would go for is four times 100 millimeters to start out. And, um, and then take it from there. I would go four times 100 millimeter. When I feel comfortable there, I would go four times 110, uh, especially f physically stronger athlete, um, if you're tall, if you've got you know, just the, you know, the muscle power to do it then 110 millimeters and then ultimately when you are good at skating and you want to get that PB at a marathon or whatever your goals might be, go for three times 125. But if it's less than that, just more contact points means generally, unless the frame is longer, which it isn't, the 110 generally, um, I, I would just take more contact points and the wheel smaller, keep them lighter so you can actually move around and um, go with that. How glad I could help. Okay. Time to check out here. Um, feel free to DM me on, on Instagram if you have more questions. If not, I will make more live streams like this. You can also leave a comment after the stream is over. I'm, I'm going to upload it directly on YouTube. So uh, 
everybody can uh, can take part in this. 25k after what's that's all that's a good start um respect for that that's a that's a big distance to go um especially when you're new in skating hats off okay thanks a lot for tuning in guys i had fun i'm a little sore in my butt I, uh, <laughs> skating is hard drawing is hard but uh, this is how we get better see you for the next live there's gonna be more videos uploaded on the channel but thanks for now i i had a blast i hope you guys had fun too